and hello YouTube, JSMAM Smart here, and today's video we're going to be teaching you how to create 3D text in Adobe After Effects to then also change that 3D text in Premiere Pro, and we'll teach you how to use some 3D camera tracking so you can make your text pop out and really look awesome. That's coming up next. What's up guys, JS Man Smart here, today with another brand new video for Tutorials with JS. Thanks for stopping by, glad to have you in another video. If you haven't been new to my channels, new to my videos, I want to welcome you as well and I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Plenty of the tutorials regarding After Effects, Premiere Pro, video editing, audio editing, image editing, all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're interested in creating things using the Adobe products or even some of the free products such as Audacity or GIMP, a lot to learn on our channel and I encourage you to hit that subscribe button as well as that post notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the most recent videos. So here we are in Premiere Pro and I have a uh, stock footage clip of someone walking through a forest. I got this over for free at Video Blocks. Lots of cool stuff over at Video Blocks if you want to check that out. As you can see, we're just walking through the forest here. Now, what I want to do is add some text to this, but I don't want to, I don't want to just want to add, you know, static text or text that's on top of the video. I want to add text that it makes it look like that text is part of this scene. It's part of the forest. And how we can do that is through After Effects, through 3D text, and through camera and motion tracking. So the first thing we're going to do is if you have a clip in Premiere Pro, you want to bring it to After Effects. If you already have that clip in After Effects as a composition, you can skip this step. We want to go ahead and right click this and click replace with After Effects composition. Want to make sure you have the After Effects open as well, obviously, and we'll just save this to our desktop. Uh, this is fine for now. Don't need to name it anything crazy. And as you can see, this brings a new composition uh, with the same length that your clip is, and we can do our work right in here. Now I'm going to pre-render it real quick so we can work in real time. So be back in just a second. All right. So we have it pre-rendered. Uh, what you want to do next is go up to workspace, which should be in your window panel, head to workspace and you want to click motion tracking, which is this one right here. And from here on, what we want to do is click track camera. Make sure you have your composition selected. Otherwise it'll be grayed out and you can't click anything. So click your composition here in the timeline and then click track camera. Now this will take a bit to analyze the footage in the background, depending on how uh, large your file is, depending on how long your file is, will depend on how long this takes. This dialog can pop up, but you can just ignore it, press OK, and it's fine. You'll see here it says analyzing in background step one of two. Once the both steps are complete, we can go ahead and continue on this project. The cool thing about this little effect though, is that you can still work in After Effects and other compositions. You can still work in Premiere Pro and still work in After Effects both ways actually, while this is still analyzing in the background. So if you have something else that you can do that in the meantime. Now, if you actually go over to your effects panel, which is right here on the left side, you'll see a status section on the left here, which tells you how many frames it's gone through, how many frames it has to go, and how long approximately it'll take to get through analyzing in background. So my video just finished camera tracking and you'll see that we have a bunch of little X's here. Now, if you play the video, these X's will go away. So you have to pause the video and you'll see X's in the 3D uh, space 3D plane here. Now, if you get an error while trying to track camera over here, you may have to change this option right here to zoom or you might need to specify more specifically. Most of the time though, you should have no problem tracking camera with the, the first option checked. Next, you're going you're gonna to want to select a X that's on the floor here where you'd like the text to show up. So you can pick any of them really. However, I want to pick one that's right here in the front uh, just so it's a bit easier. And I think I'm going to pick, it really doesn't matter uh, at what point you select one of these X's because they'll be visible through the entire time as long as the specific X is within the shot. So use this one right here, most pretty much because on the floor, it's leveled in the floor. So it's exactly what we want. Go ahead and click on this X. And right in the center of this, you want to right click and you want to click set ground place and origin. And this will make sure that it's centered. They want to right click one more time. You want to click add text in camera. It's actually called create text in camera, which is right here. And you'll see that this creates some text already. It also creates a camera for us. Now, right now the text is on the floor, which is exactly how it would look like because we have our text on the ground uh, floor here. It's on the ground plane laying on top of the floor. And you'll see the text here. It says text around the floor as the circle indicates right here. Now, if you press uh, the text layer here, 
and you press R to bring up the rotation, you can actually start to move these axes around the X, Y, and Z axis, and you'll see that each of this does something different. We're going to go ahead and move the X axis a bit to the right, though, and you'll see the text stands up right inside uh, the video here. And the cool thing is, is that if we were to go and uh, move this, basically, you'll see that the text actually stays in place while the camera is moving, so it looks like the text is actually part of this forest here. So compared to something like in Premiere Pro where you have static text where it doesn't stand still in place, here it stands still in place. You can make some really cool stuff happen. So I'm going to go ahead and go back a little bit. We want to enhance this text so it looks 3D-ish and it looks a bit cooler. I also want to uh, turn it a bit so it's like this. So when we go by it, we're not running through the text, I think. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, we're passing by the text. So when you create this, and you can even animate this if you wanted to start it facing you and then it basically turns that way. You can animate with keyframes here. So you can do animation on this text as well. If we were to go to our text tool right now and double click this, and you scroll down to the text workspace here, we're actually going to change the kerning to optical kerning, and that makes the text look a bit cleaner. Depends on the type of font that you have. For some fonts, it's barely a difference. For other fonts, it's a clear difference, so it really depends. In fact, we're going to go and change this uh, font to a different font, and if you want to realign the text, you can also do that. Center align, left align. As you can see, we're going to go and center align it though. If you want to move the text up or down, for example, you want to have it hanging from the tree here, you can do that. However, you don't want to mess around with the X, Y, or Z rotation. You want to work with the anchor point. So if you go ahead and twirl the text down, twirl it back up, you'll see anchor point is an option right here. And it also has an X, Y, and Z plane. So we move the anchor point up or down you'll see that it actually doesn't change the position on the 3D plane, it just changes the anchor point. And now, if we were to go by it, you'll see that it actually looks like we're passing uh, the text that's hanging on the tree. However, I don't think I want that type of effect for this type of video, mainly because I want it on the floor here. Maybe we'll bring it up just a little bit. Now, if you wanted to add some material options here to make it look more 3D, we're going to have to change the renderer. So if you go up to the renderer here, right now it's at Cinema 3D. If you double click this though, it opens up and you can actually change this renderer to something like Cinema 4D. Now, be aware when you do this, you do disable some options and enable other options. If you do need some of the Cinema 3D options though, you can always pre-compose the composition and work on a pre-comp and re-enable this renderer again and you can have the 3D options available. This will allow us to have some geometry material options, which originally are not available in the Cinema 3D renderer. Now, if we go ahead and twirl this back down, we press double A twice. You'll see we have the material options right here. And there are a lot of different things you can mess around with here, a lot of different options. Uh, really, if you want to see the difference between this, uh, what each of these can do, just move the sliders back and forth and you'll see how much of a difference it can make. For example, this one right here, if we move it down, it uh, darkens the text a little bit, as you can see. So just slide these sliders up and down and you'll see what it does. You can also animate these with keyframes. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. This is where your creative, this is where your creativity mostly comes in play, working with these options here. But to make your text 3D, really, you want to work with the extrusion depth. Now, if you make the extrusion depth really big, you'll see that it starts to look like this kind of where you can barely even tell what the text says. So you want to be careful with that a little bit. Sometimes moving the sliders can make a huge difference when you don't want a huge difference. So you can hold down the control button or the command button, I believe it's on Mac, and you can then slowly uh, move it to the right and you'll see subtle changes only, which is great if you want to fine tune your effects. And as you can see, as we keep moving this to the right, uh, our text becomes more 3D. Now I think I want to have an extrusion of about four, perhaps. Uh, yeah, four looks good, actually. If we go ahead and click away. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now to make this more noticeable that you can actually read this without the extrusion messing up, you want to go ahead and add a light. So I'm going to go up to Layer, New, and add a new light. We want to make sure this is a point light. We're going to change that to point. Make sure your smoothing's at 100. Make sure this option here is set to smooth. 500 and 500 should be okay, and we do want to cast shadows. Uh, for these options, once again, you could fiddle around these and experiment. I'm going to pick 70% and 30, and we're going to press OK. And you'll see now that we have a light 
that's basically behind the text. And because it's behind the text, it's black like this. You can't really tell a difference. For this next part, for this next part, you wanna make sure you have your parent column enabled. And to do that, just right click at the top here of your uh, layers, at the very top of the layers where the title bar is. Then go to columns and make sure parent is ticked. Then what we wanna do is we wanna grab our light here with this little rope here. You wanna hold it, hold down shift as well. Then once you have it attached to your text, let go of your mouse, let go of shift, and this will now basically attach the light to uh, the text. However, you can see now we are casting the light on the text here, but it's behind, kind of to the left actually here. So you want to go ahead and bring this light to the front. If you click your light now, however, and press the P key on your keyboard, you can now change the position of your light. So if we move our light this way, you'll see it won't really make too huge of a difference. We're still behind. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this light forward a bit and let's see if that does it. All right, so there we have it. We finally got the light to work. Sometimes you have to move these sliders around quite a bit depending on uh, where your text is as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these sliders around just a bit, just so I have uh, a perfect light on my text the way I want it. Sometimes the, these loadings bar at the bottom right here take way too long. You can always change the quality of your composition to a quarter or a half, and that'll actually speed it up a bit. So there we go. I think I like how this looks. I have the tech, I have the light basically in the bottom of the text looking at it. And we have, you can see that the shadows are right behind the text here, which is pretty cool. Now, if you do, uh, extrude this text even more, you'll see there's a greater shadow behind it. But I think this looks great for now. Now back in our text, if we go in AA again on this to bring up our material options, we're gonna go ahead and add a bevel here. So right here for your bevel option, let's go ahead and select convex. So here's our convex bevel. And you'll see this now adds a nice bevel effect. However, if it's a bit too much, you can always uh, mess around with the settings right here. In fact, for our bevel depth, we're gonna change it to 0.8 perhaps. Uh, maybe one, let's see how one looks. One looks pretty good. So as you can see, the, inten the intensity of that bevel effect is determined by this value right here. A lot of other options you can mess around with here, such as specular shininess, uh, shininess, different glows, all kinds of cool stuff here. So I encourage you to experiment. This is the art really behind this, to experiment with this. So for specular shininess, maybe I wanna have a value of 80 perhaps then we might diffuse this to like 70 so that the shininess isn't just in one spot. We want to diffuse it across the text here. And then we might want to duplicate uh, this light actually. And that's very easy just by copying and pasting the light. You also want to make sure you have this selected to the text that's connected to the text here. And as you can see, uh, now it's lighting it up quite a bit. However, I don't want to do that. I want to have this light be at a different spot. You can move the light around here. Uh, with your mouse just and moving it up and down this way. So you don't necessarily need to use uh, the sliders here. And once again, after a bit of experimentation, you can come up with a pretty cool lighting effect on top of your text here. Uh, if you need more lights, for example, uh, you can add more lights. If you only need one light, you can add one light and you can make them as close as far and pointing to different directions wherever you want them to be. One thing I do suggest you keep in mind as you do this, if you're doing this for a movie or some type of show, or if you're doing it for a title sequence, make sure you uh, make the word the biggest word you can think of, because then when you go back to change this in Premiere Pro, it'll be easy to change because you'll be working with smaller words only. So this is pretty much what we're gonna have for now. I'm not gonna change the text, because I wanna show you how to change the text in Premiere Pro. Let's go ahead and save this composition right here. This should uh, suffice for a great tutorial and how to use some of the material options, the lighting, the, the extrusion, the 3D text, the camera. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Let's head back over to Premiere Pro now here. And if we go to the position where our text is, you'll see now that when we're in Premiere Pro, the text is actually in sight here. Now what I would like to do is if I had more time, I'd obviously want to perhaps maybe uh, make this text fade in. I don't want to have the text right as the camera goes in, like what, right when the clip starts. So in fact, let me go and do that real quick just so we have a bit uh, better of a composition and an example here. So here we go. I just added a couple of keyframes here. So we fade in, uh, we fade the text in. 
at a certain point, 15 frames to fade in. We go and save this now and we go back to Premiere Pro. We should see the text go away at the very beginning. And as we play this, and as we play this and get to about a minute and seven seconds, then you'll see this text start to fade in like I want it to. Now, if you wanted to change this text, let's go ahead and move a few frames ahead so we can actually see the text uh, in its full form. Now, if we go ahead and click our composition here and we press F, this will basically match the frame. And if we go to our effect control panel, you'll see that our linked composition now has a field that says text and we have text written in here. But if I wanted to type in something like YouTube here, you'll see that the text here says YouTube. Now this is what I was saying. You want to work with a very big word because if you don't work with a big word, you'll run into situations like this where the word might be too big and it might go off screen. So I'm actually going to go ahead and change this to a smaller word and then I'm going to render this and I'll show you guys the final product. So see you in just a second. So here's the finished product rendered. Now you take a look at this. We have our text fade in here. It's part of the clip. It doesn't stay still on screen. It doesn't move around weirdly. It stays at the exact same spot throughout the entire video, basically inside these leaves. You can even see how detailed it gets. You can see the branches through the O here still. A lot of shadowing looks really good. The bevel here looks great too. So a lot of cool things you can do with camera tracking and in After Effects. Obviously you can make this look even better by working with some layer masks and maybe having some of the leaves cover the bottom of the text. So let your creativity uh, run here. Uh, hopefully the tools that I showed you though will help you in creating your own projects that you can have 3D text in your clips. That's mainly what the tutorial is about, showing you, giving you the tools and then you can use those tools to create what you want. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. Any questions, suggestions, comments on, on making this better? If you have any cool ideas, for such projects with camera tracking, go and leave a comment down below as well. I'll be checking the comments down there occasionally and talking to you guys as usual. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Plenty of other tutorials just like this one, as well as tutorials on other video editing projects in After Effects, Premiere Pro, and everything else relating to Adobe and creativity. If you want to check out my most recent video, click the annotation here. If you want to check out a similar video to this one, click the annotation here. If you want to subscribe to my other channel, such as the gaming or vlogging channel, annotations here. And if you want to donate dollars to my Patreon page, you can click the annotation here. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always. This is GS Man Smart. I'll be back soon. You think? Don't go anywhere.